home building and remodeling show. Let's go. <laughs> Welcome everybody to the Home Building and Remodeling Show. My name is Chris Kirby and I'll be your host. I am the owner of three construction companies on the Alabama Gulf Coast. The show is about residential construction. We're going to cover topics of home building and remodeling. Are you thinking of doing a remodel or building a home? Are you a contractor looking to improve your knowledge base or grow your business? Have you ever done a remodel project or built a home? There were so many things you wish you knew or that you could have done differently during the process. Then this show is for you. We break down the process of building and remodeling and how to have the best results during your project. Whether you're a DIYer looking for tips, someone looking to hire a contractor to do a project, or a contractor looking to expand your knowledge base or your business. Welcome aboard. Glad to have you. Stay tuned. We kick off the show with my thoughts on home building and remodeling. I'll share best practices and talk about some of our experiences in business and out in the field. These shared thoughts and lessons learned are meant to help you on your very own journey. Let's go. I'm going to talk about the, um, having a pre-construction checklist. So one of the toughest things in construction or for the client in construction is getting them to understand how much legwork is involved in preparing a piece of raw land for construction. And so we're going to talk through that. I know here at Kirby Homes and uh, Kirby Custom Renovation, we have pre-construction checklists. I also have a pre-construction coordinator that helps the client walk through the entire process of pre-construction. Um, our checklist has 35 items, believe it or not. So there are 35 things on our checklist that have to be done before we even break ground to start the build. So we'll go from really the beginning, which is identifying the lot and why you want your builder involved when you first start looking at lots is because it, the builder is going to take a look at the lot and he's going to understand the site and prep work that it's going to take to prepare the lot. But not only that, he will also, he or she will also understand what it's going to take to get the utilities to the property, whether or not you're going to have to have a septic or will you be on public sewer? Are you going to have to have a well or are you going to be on public water? Can you even get utilities to the property depending on how rural the property is? And then sometimes that will deter a client from buying that piece of property because it does cost a lot to do the site prep and get it ready for the utilities to be connected. So it's going to take the builder, the engineer, the actual electrical company, the electrical engineer from the electrical company to come out and take a look. And um, then you can determine the cost, right? So how much does it cost to run electrical a thousand feet into the woods and how far will the electrical company go? And then can I get my electrician to tie in from where they're going to set that, that power, that, that box? So there are limitations on what you can do depending on the property, where it's at, how rural it is. Whereas in a subdivision, an empty lot, let's just say an empty lot that's clear, is much easier to prepare, to prepare for building on. So your builder um, should be looking at that and telling you, okay, most likely you're going to be on public sewer, public water. Here's how much it's going to cost to connect to those. Here's who you need to call. These are some of the things we do, and that's why just identifying the lot and then looking at and evaluating what it's going to take to prepare the site to build your home. And so that is the first step in our checklist. And now we move into Shop Talk. It's the portion of the show where I bring in a co-host and we cover trending topics in home building and remodeling. Hope you enjoy. Let's go. All right, so today we're going to talk a little bit about bathroom remodeling. Again, I've got Mark here, and we're going to just kind of break down a bathroom remodel in general, maybe answer some questions, uh, talk about best practices, and some of the materials that we use specifically 
now right now all we use we used to do and we'll just jump right in we used to do what was called a mud bed and we've switched from doing that which was basically taking the mortar and building it up correct yeah. creating a slope that's right okay and then we went away from that why did we go away from doing that some of it is the waterproofing mm -hmm. is is more of a, a challenge yeah to get it waterproofed you know your liners and everything is a few more steps takes a little longer so now the saluda product you know takes some of the steps out and makes it a lot easier to work with yeah so some of the the, the schluter kit that uh, we use now it's lightweight it's a com compressed foam it is and it comes with a curb you can also get a, a bench they have niches yep. they have all the different things that you would need typically in your shower but they're lightweight and where we would have to pour a mud bed and how long how long do you think it would take to do the old school way versus what we do now so the old school way you would have to pour your mud bed yep waterproof it mm -hmm. and then water test it yeah you know stop the drain up put your little water in it and let it set 24 hours yeah you know so now you're in two days just to get it bread guard and water tested yeah where with the saluda pan you have one day and you're ready to set tile gotcha yeah, so it, it saved us a, a day, which, you know, for us is a hefty bit on labor. And then it was also more lightweight. A lot more lightweight. Yeah. So what's the difference in kind of, we talked about the mud bed, so the uh, pan, people say mud pan, they say a pan, shower pan. There's all different types of names can call this thing, but uh, we now use the, the Curdy for that, the, the Schluter system for that. And uh, on the walls, a part of that Schluter system is the Curdy board. It is either Curdy board or the Curdy membrane. Curdy board or Curdy membrane. Yeah, which we typically use the membrane. Okay. Um, it does apply directly over a green rock. Okay. Uh, thin sets. It, it's, uh, Do you have to have, so can you tell me when we're looking at drywall in a bathroom or a wet area, any really wet area, is there a difference between a regular of drywall versus what they call purple board or green board or any of that there is okay so what are the different uh colors and what are they for so the green rock and purple rock are for moisture areas other than that the uh, what is the actual curdy board versus um using a piece of sheet rock or the curdy membrane so the curdy board is half inch thick and it is made the same product as the floor. Okay. It so is, it's a, it's like a, a compressed, compressed styrofoam. Gotcha. But a sheet of it yeah. might weigh 10 pounds. Yeah. Versus a sheet of sheet rock weighs several more pounds than that. Yeah, absolutely. And we and we used to use um, what's called Durock. Yeah. And uh, even that, sometimes I noticed a lot of the edges and stuff would just chip and break because yeah. all that is is like a packed or compressed concrete, concrete. or sand, right? Yeah. So when you when you look at doing a, a bathroom, let's talk about the first step. You're gonna walk in and uh, you've got all your measurements. You've got you know material ordered and sitting at the shop, right? Vanity, flooring, all that. Yep. But let's just talk about the first step in a bathroom remodel. What do you what do you physically as the contractor when it's time to go to work? What are you doing? The very first thing I would do is start my demo. Okay. Uh, size up the bathroom my entry points, get everything protected, and then start demoing the shower. Yeah. Whether it's a tub, you know, garden tubs are really popular to take out now. Yep, Turn everybody is, yeah. is taking out their, well, yeah. I, you know what? What's funny is it was everybody was taking out the garden tub and putting in a shower and not even having a tub, right? Yeah. Converting like linen closets into a smaller shower or um, vice versa, just only having a large shower and, and uh, taking out the garden tub. But now it seems like people are, they've went back to yeah. getting tubs. Yeah, they're right? trending back to tubs in the master, but it's not the garden tub. It's, right. It's a it's, free it's a stand in. Free stand and stand or alone. Something to that. And it's, yeah. Um, right now I think aesthetically, just the look of a standalone tub is what, yeah. what what's trending and people are, are getting them. So they're taking out they still want the big walk-in though we're, we're still doing that so 
All right, so we'll get back on it. So you're talking, you walk in and, and you demo, chipping up all the all the tile, ripping out the the um, the shower. Is there a right way to do that, or you just walk in and go to town? You know, I do look at what kind of shower it is. Mm-hmm. If it's an insert, first thing I do is locate my point of water source. Yeah. Make sure the water's off. Yeah. And then I take a hacksaw to the insert. Yeah. Or a sawzall. So once you cut that water off, if you've, you're you using a sawzall or any of that type of stuff, you aren't necessarily worried about poking a pipe. So I'm always worried about poking a pipe. Sure. But I, I'm not worried about flooding the house that way. Right. So when I go in, I still stay mindful of where I feel like the water line should be. Sure. And as I get to those points, I try to keep my blade shallow. Once I get it cut and then remove the upper piece, because I usually cut it in half. Yeah. Vertically. And uh, is there still water in the lines, even though you cut off the, um, you know, turn the valves off outside and there's no water to the bathroom or to the house? Is there still water in the lines you got to be mindful of? There is. Uh, A good thing to think about when you start something like that is to find your lowest... um, water faucet outside okay and open it up okay and that'll help drain all the water below your valve level yep so if you do hit something at that height so if you're you, not gonna have very much water at all come out yeah and that's kind of a good tip to use there so what he's saying is you've shut off the valve you've shut off water to the house yeah right and you're saying go and find the lowest faucet lowest, lowest outside faucet and open it up Yep. And that'll drain your water level lower than what most shower valves are. Got it. That makes sense. Okay. We've... Now we're going to move into the portion of the show where we talk interior design. We're going to bring in an interior designer and we're going to talk trending design and products. Hope you enjoy. Let's go. Some people do have a hard time yeah, just making... You get pretty overwhelmed when you are looking at that. So, so when you're looking at the actual design process um do you start with color first does that determine the rest of the the items that are going to go or how does well first you're trying to um listen to the client and sure. really um point to what or focus on what their needs and what they're trying to um change or do in that, that space yeah so that's that you're just gathering information so, part yeah and then okay right. and at that point i mean you can you can walk around the house and see a color palette um, or if they're wanting to do something completely different, that's fine too. It, it's their home. Now, is there is there is there times you have to kind of keep, can they get wild and you have to keep that in check? Like with their like Usually ideas. I, I, I'm probably the one that pushes the envelope more than that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good though. I mean, you know, so, but you still corral them and give them options right. and things like that. Right. So, yes. so ideally I would give them uh, two to three options, um, and that's for any selection that they have. Sure. Uh, flooring, paint color, tile. Um, so because there, there's a lot of finishes, whatever. But you can definitely narrowing down all those options is what I need to do. And and there's a lot of decisions to be made, right. and that's where that's the reason why you kind of listen to their needs and put together two or three options right. instead of. You can walk in, even into our place, and look at our our big tile display, mm-hmm. and there's 150 tile exactly. on there. So they don't know where to begin, and so that's really right. where you put the effort in. Right. Okay, so we did the consultation. Um, Casey won the job. He put together the budget, and, and you guys have really put together the picture. So from there, um, now what's the what's kind of the next it's, step? Um, yeah, going through the selections process with the client at that point, once all those selections are made, um, being part of that install and the actual job that's being done. Yeah. Um, so so we'll we'll give them site, yeah we'll seeing, give them a a date to start. Let's just say it's a kitchen remodel. Mm-hmm. So we'll put them on the board, and usually you know it's not a let's start right away right. because there are selections that have to be made. Um, and so once they, they give us a deposit, we start ordering materials. And so let's just say they have 30 items. 
well, 29 might be within 10 days, mm -hmm. but their cabinets may be custom right. and you're four months out. Right. So realistically, for, for any contractor or designer to say, oh, we can get started soon, it's really, in some cases, it may be true if you already know that it's an easy project with not a lot of selections right. and materials. Right. Um, but in most cases, especially in remodeling, um, there's going to be some lead time on materials. Right. Right. So, uh, and we let them know that. And then we schedule it. And let's just say now all their materials have come in and we're ready to start the install and remodel. Um, one of the more important parts you spoke of earlier was that you like to be there for, for installs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Especially, yeah. But yeah. Especially when tiles being laid. Yeah. And, and I know, you know, you're, you're a stickler for layout, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. layout determines everything. Right. Right. And so you, there's so many different things that you can do with tile, right? right? So uh, our guys are there to install the tile. Mm -hmm. They're going to get the tile. And they're going to say, okay, you know, mm -hmm. if it's, let's just say subway tile, okay, we're just going to vertically stack it. Well, you may want it differently. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. you may want a herringbone. You may want to, right. you know. And this is why I wanted to work with a builder because I wanted to be, um, I wanted to go through that process together on that. Like, sure. There's so many opportunities for mistakes when designers are in, in the socks and there's designers that work for great builders. I'm not saying that, but sure, to have sure. it all under uh, one roof, um, even being that it's three separate companies, it's still, it flows. We can, we can coordinate a lot of right. things that the client don't see from their perspective is all the background coordination right, between right. all of us. Yeah. Um, it definitely for, for you, I think in a lot of designers that we still work with and have worked in the past, they they don't they don't want to bear the burden of being a general contractor right. but by nature of our industry a lot of designers still are acting right. in that capacity right. and they definitely take on the role they're, as a project manager yeah and they're right. managing the project yeah. and yep. subs yep. and so where now you have the freedom to really do the work you love mm -hmm. yeah. and that's what we wanted to create well, I here can walk what 25 feet and get into the project manager space yeah <laughs> that, that's I have right to. You right know, like, yeah so there is a benefit to having that all under one house. Absolutely. And we talked about it too, where, um, you know, the communication, you really want to communicate with the project manager and the client at That's the right. same time. Right. And the client needs to have the ability for all of us to be able to on be in. Page, right? Yes, because um, there's a lot of stuff that gets lost in translation. Mm -hmm. And if the interior designer has the vision, um, she's going to want to make sure that vision holds true even on change orders. Right. And right. so what tends to happen is if, let's say you miss a day, right? We've mm -hmm. got to have a platform to communicate and keep you in the loop mm -hmm. because interior designers are sticklers with that vision right. piece. Right. And our project managers being construction guys and girls, they're going to just say, oh, a change order. You want a different hood vent okay cool mm -hmm. go buy the hood vent and install it all of a sudden you come back and you're like wait a minute yeah. this ain't that this yeah this plan. is gonna mess up <laughs> the rest of the vision right, right, so right. yeah so thanks for joining us today as always we are grateful for our listeners and your continued support please subscribe to our youtube channel follow us on social media via facebook instagram and tiktok get more info at our website www.thehomebuildingshow.com and as always remember who we are the home building and remodeling show